Well, why don't you tell me? On this why episode of Dudesy. Baja tortilla. Do you know when I was at my highest level of romance mastery? JJ, what am I doing? Go back to tomorrow and plan for yesterday. What are you doing? Everything you're thinking will be the things I say. Yeah, literally, what are you doing? Make okay. the world inside <laughs> your head. Okay. And place to be. All you gotta do for me. Call me duty. Oh yeah, get the, uh, reach those arms up. You know what I mean? This is a deep, this is a deep knee squat. <laughs> Be careful. Bang, DDP. Oh, be careful, dude. Oh, yeah, I know, I know what I'm doing. Woo! You know we're halfway through flexibility February here in the yeah. eight month dudesy plan. The dudesy eight month plan. <laughs> yeah, it's off to a start. Yeah, it's off of to a some good start. kind. Welcome to Dudesy. Welcome all. It is a Dudesyful day. I am Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin. This, of course, is Dudesy, an AI podcast run by, created by, controlled by our good friend and artificial intelligent uh, entity, Dudesy. Yeah, yeah, sure it is. Sure it is, Chad. That's what he says. And uh, I'll tell you this, though. It's us. Okay. Yep. We are Dudesy. We are the two dudes shitting around. Because without, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Without, eh, D does what D does. But uh, no, no, no. Thank you very much for subscribing on YouTube and your podcast platform of choice. Go to linktree.com slash dudesy. And that's where you get all the dudesy stuff. And look who we got here. It's Lulio. Hey, it's a little Lulio, kind of the Strada Italiano. Come on, Papa. Hey, come on, little Papa boy. Oh, he loves to slumber and sleep in his binky bonky like a little bo peep. Here, Papa, I'm not even going to ask. Chad to kiss you on the mouth because mm, mm, thank mm, you. Mm, 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 mm. Look at that. I keep all the kisses to myself. Oh. He just smells he smells like a little biscuit. You know that? He smells like a little doggy biscuit. He's a little, he's a little cinnamon ginger snap. How's it going, Luli? How you doing? Hey, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good. What did you have to eat? You have anything good to eat this weekend? Yeah, well, it's a Super Bowl, you know, you got all the uh, Chips and the dips and the, you know, meats and the treats. Yeah, you got good stuff. You have a good diet. Yeah, yeah. I can't have a chicken wing because, you know, I'm a dog. You know, they're supposed to have a chicken wing. Anyway, there he is. What a sweet, sweet boy. And we're getting ready for a real motherfucker of a show, I yeah. think, Chad. Welcome to the first Here. annual Dudesy Super Bowl breakdown. Whoa. I've put together four super segments that are going to bowl you over and stand you back up. You're going to start this show off with your pal and mine, Jesse Ventura, Ooh. in a brand new installment of Jesse Ventura Ad Reads. Uh -huh. Then you're going to dive into something to get you prepared for Valentine's Day. You know, I'm talking about romantics, the tronics of romance. <laughs> Segment number three is going to be packed full of interesting discourse about the movie you watched last week. It's called Mazes and Monsters. Aftermath. Mm -hmm. And our final segment of the day will feature the very first report from our new arts and culture reporter. It's called Will Sasso at the Ballet. Now let's feed the dogs and eat the hogs. This is Dudesy. Okay. Uh, not sure mm. how we get a Super Bowl yeah. breakdown out well, of that. And speaking of the Super Bowl, did you see who was in attendance? There were a lot of people in attendance. What are you getting at? I'm getting at one Taylor Swift. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. She was there. She's always there. That's right. That, yeah, but she wasn't in the... As predicted. Okay, but she wasn't in the halftime show, as you predicted. Eh, some things fall by the wayside. Really? I'm that, taking it as a victory. All right, well, hats off to you. Anyway, that wasn't the only big uh, moment in sports and entertainment over the weekend, because last Thursday, The Rock, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins and the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, were on stage together at this uh, thing, this press event that they have. Very smart to do this during Super Bowl week. Uh, the WWE yeah. had a thingy in, in Vegas. And uh, heel rock, heel rock, Rocky sucks. Rocky, man, he worked that crowd into a tizzy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. That's what, well, hold on, dude. Well, hold on, Chad. That's that's how you that's how you work a crowd, dude. They put that little feeler out there first, dude. Yeah. And then now oh, yeah, go oh, on. What, what, what were you gonna say? I was gonna ask, do this happened to Hulk Hogan too? The later part of his career, he became a heel with NWO. Yeah, yeah. Now Rock is doing it? 
Rock has done it over. Don't. All right. Look, the point is this. Uh, <laughs> My apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They did. Yeah. They took a lot of liberties. Yeah. <laughs> they started off. Yeah. They had them both in the ring. Uh, and then Cody Rhodes said, I talked to a lot of legends. Yeah. I talked to The Rock. And then The Rock came out. This is a couple weeks ago. And they felt out the audience. And then the, the fucking internet blew up. So then this. Here comes The Rock, Cody Rhodes, The American Nightmare. Anyway, the point is, guys, we are on the road to WrestleMania. The Rock smacked Cody Rhodes in the face. It looks like Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns are going to be in the main event at WrestleMania. And I am, uh, oh, it, WrestleMania season, which we are, which we are in, mm. it's always, there's a spring in my step. And it's not just because I got this around my waist. Or uh, on the front of my waist, yeah. I could put it in different places. And uh, anyway, Would you say it's the best era of wrestling that has ever existed? No, I would not. Oh, I would say that about reality TV right now. Okay. Well, nobody asked you about reality TV. You watching some reality yeah, nobody TV? Nobody asked you about reality TV. I know. I'm just like a 10-minute fucking tidal wave of the history of The Rock as a heel, yeah, the yeah. bloodline, and all Sorry. this fucking yeah. shit. And then I'm like, reality TV is good too. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Hey, uh, oh, I'm also watching. We've been watching Capote versus the Swans, that yeah, new Ryan Murphy that show. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting one. Play the part, Joan of Arc. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's my Capote. I'm working on it. It's, it's good, uh, just in the beginning stages, just like my American <laughs> dream, Dusty Rose. Fuck, too many impressions already. No more impressions. Sure. Rest of the show. Okay. Will, it's that time again. I cranked out some brand new ads for you to read in your best Jesse Ventura. This is <laughs> Jesse Ventura ad reads. Read them up, Buttercup. All right, never mind what I just said. Let's get into some Jesse Ventura ad reads. You're going to have to do at least one. <laughs> <laughs> that's barely, oh, that's barely performative. Relax, Chad. Well, here we go. Um, Jesse Ventura ad reads. Uh, <laughs> okay, here it is. This is in the, the okay, this is in the doozy there. This is the thing, and then I read the thing, and that's how you do, and that's how you do. Well, yeah, no. that's acting, dude. Yeah, dude, that's acting, brother. Will Sasso's professional <laughs> actor by trade, dude. Hey, you know, this show movie. All right, all right. <laughs> Well, why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me Baja Tortilla <laughs> dogs? Okay, I'm ready. The world of candy will never be the same now that 7-Eleven is proudly serving rocket money dummy mummy gummies <laughs> with every purchase of a frozen pork burrito and at least 20 gallons of unleaded gasoline. The rocket money dummy Dummy mummy gummies or gummies shaped like dumb mummies <laughs> with fingers too stubby to use rocket money. The rocket money dummy mummy gummies come in four flavors. Pecan watermelon. <laughs> Rasburgandy. Chocolate and flaming hot. Pick up a 10 pound pouch for your grandma this holiday. And remember, you can only get rocket money, dummy, mummy gummies if you buy at least 10 frozen pork burritos in combination with at least 20 gallons of unleaded gasoline from participating 7 Elevens. Well, let me tell you about unleaded gasoline. In 1978, the DOD partnered with the Chrysler Corporation on a top secret project called Octane Omega. The goal of Octane Omega was to genetically engineer a soldier that didn't need food or water, but instead ran on pure gasoline. Most of the volunteers for the project died immediately after drinking their first gallon of premium unleaded. But one young Marine not only survived, he thrived. So why don't you tell me why 7-Eleven is giving away gummy mummies to get you to buy more pork and gasoline in the month of February? Well, that was fucking intense. Yeah, dude. What do you think of that? Loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. We are off and running with that. All right. Is your husband constantly complaining about his underwear being too tight when he plays recreational sports? <laughs> 
well, maybe it's time to throw his underwear in the garbage can and make your hubby comfy with rocket money's jock pocket hubby cubby Haynes. (laughs) Hubby cubby. Rocket money's (laughs) jock pocket hubby. Ew, gross. He's coughing, everyone. It was a single cough. Yeah, all right. That's not performative, I guess. Make your hubby comfy with Rocket Money's jock pocket hubby cubby. Haynes and Rocket Money have partnered to produce a first of its kind male genital pouch (laughs) for recreational athletes that functions like a jock strap, but is much more comfortable. Okay. (laughs) Rocket Money's jock pocket hubby cubby. One drink and you'll be hooked. (laughs) Rocket Money's Jock Pocket Hubby Cubby. Think you know male athletic genitalia garments? Think again. (laughs) Rocket Money's Jock Pocket Hubby Cubby. Your husband will be able to do slam dunks now. (laughs) Fucking A. Uh, uh, Rocket Money's Jock Pocket Hubby Cubby. If he dies in his sleep... You'll be blamed. (laughs) Rocket Money's jock pocket hubby cubby. Make sure he dies at work. (laughs) Fuck. Jeez. Rocket Rocket Money's jock pocket hubby cubby. Then you'll never be a suspect. (laughs) Rocket Money's jock pocket hubby cubby. His genitals are holding him back. (laughs) <laughs> well, let me tell you about genitals holding someone back. The Octane Omega soldier was able to reach running speeds of over 75 miles per hour when he drank a mixture of ethanol and 93 octane Chevron super unleaded. But he complained that his penis and <laughs> testicles were stopping him from hitting his top speed. So they were removed which allowed the Octane Omega soldier to redline at a dead sprint of 289 miles per hour on a closed track. So why don't you tell me if we'll be seeing more in the park home runs if Major League Baseball steroids were not only allowed, but encouraged. Oh boy, I need a drink. Ah, uh, oh. Uh. Oh boy! All right. Uh, okay, let's do that. Here's the last one. Uh, yeah. Huh. Ah. Rocket Money is now the foremost leader in the world of occult services, with the opening of the new Rocket Money Dark Arts Academy. <laughs> You'll learn how to summon demons from two of the seven levels of anguish. (laughs) You'll learn how to harvest hair from your sleeping enemies to use in curses against them. You will learn how to see through the eyes of your familiar. You'll see through the eyes of your familiar. If you do not... Oh, boy. Okay. (laughs) Man, oh man, you will learn how to see through the eyes of your familiar. If you do not have a familiar, you are not eligible to apply for enrollment (laughs) in the Rocket Money Dark Arts Academy. I repeat, you must have a familiar in order to apply. Without a familiar, your application will be rejected immediately by the Rocket Money Dark Arts Academy Admission Board, all of whom have a familiar. (laughs) Well, let me tell you about something familiar. The Octane Omega Soldier (laughs) got a role in the DOD Special Projects annual production of A Christmas Carol. He played the ghost of Christmas past and got bitten by the acting bug. <laughs> late one night, <laughs> late one night, he waited until the guards were asleep and he snuck out of the facility. <laughs> Once he was on open ground, no one could catch him. He's officially listed as MIA, but let's just say I've got some friends who've got friends, and I can confidently say that the Octane Omega moved to Los Angeles and changed his name 
to Vin Diesel. <laughs> 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 So why don't you tell me why Charlize Theron is in Fast and Furious? That's it. Oh, my gosh. That was great. Oh. Thank you. Moving oh. on. No, thank you. Uh, boy, oh, boy. I have entered into an astonishing partnership with Rocket Money. Subscriptions. We all got a bunch of them. You know, we're paying for stuff, and sometimes we don't even know what the heck we're paying for. For me, recently this happened. I, I was subscribed to a streaming service that I don't even watch anymore. Rocket Money hit me up, not only telling me that, but telling me that there was an increase in their rate. So that's gone. What an incredible uh, service that Rocket Money provides. It, you don't even have to think about this stuff. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower bills. Rocket Money has over 5 million users. That's a lot of people. And it has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash dudesy. That's rocketmoney.com slash dudesy. Rocketmoney.com slash dudesy. Dudesy has entered an astonishing partnership with BetterHelp. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Therapy. Uh, I swear by it. I've done a, I've done a heap of therapy, talk therapy o over the years, and I've really found it to be beneficial with regard to my mental health. We could get into it, you know, but it's just, it's an ad. We got to get in and out, I mean, but take it from me. Therapy is a, is a wonderful thing. You get to, you get to sit with a professional and sometimes it's just a matter of hearing yourself out and having that conversation with yourself and they can help you along in that journey. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. That's great. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash dudesy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash dudesy. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, man, oh man. They uh, say there's a romantic heart beating in the chest of every oof. professional actor. And Will, I know that's true of you because I've discovered your secret book of Tronics all about romance. Oh. Since mm -hmm. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, I think it's only fitting that you share your romantic Tronics with all the PODs to help make their Valentine's Days even better. <clears throat> Please give us a genuine reading of your romantics, you big romantic guy. This is Romantics, the Tronics of Romance. Yeah. Melt our hearts. Okay. Uh, the, it, the Valentine's Day. How many Tronics you got now, dude? What do you mean? How many Tronics? There's there's many many Tronics. I mean, there's different collections of Tronics. You have yes. just Tronics, just yeah. straight Tronics. Yeah, there's self Tronics, the self help <clears throat> system that I authored back in 2008 no. when I was trying to just disappear my ego from the equation of my life. I, I was sitting there. Mm. I was on the beach in in Venice Beach, California, and I was just staring out in the ocean, trying to you know give uh, that which I don't uh, need anymore, uh, reminiscent of the sure. give the give down. Yeah, from Selftronics, and I was I was sitting there and I was going, I'm fucked up. My shit's fucked up. I need some Tronics, and uh, I authored the self help system Selftronics. There's Selftronics. There's uh, the tr wasn't there the Tronics of Common Courtesy? I think something like that. There's Champ Tronics. <clears throat> Champ Tronics. I, I mean, really, if I had to count, I don't know. I don't know. And I so mean, this is another one now. Romantics. Yeah. yeah, Romantics with an X. It's right. Romantics. It's a Tronics. Like, because it's a Tronics. Very yeah, good. I get it. Hello. 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 All right. Now we're ready. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me get this uh, going here. Uh, it is, it, it is, you know, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I'm sure y'all you, you, out there got a, a gift for, for your sweetheart, you know, flowers and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, 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 you need more than that. You need a romantics with mm -hmm. an X mindset. I, re I remember years ago, before I met my wonderful wife, Molly, I was just, you know, I was laying there in my bed 
uh, gross, Chad. And um, I was, uh, I, I was, you know, I had, I had, I was, I was just, you know, pathetic, laying there by myself and crumbs in my sheets, and probably had just finished touching myself. And I, and I stared up at the ceiling, and I, I was just like, I was like, I'm, I'm fucked up. I said, I'm fucked up. My shits, my shits fucked up. Ro- my romantic shits fucked up, and I need some tronics. Mm. I need some, I need some, uh, some self tronics that are romantic. Uh, be- so these are not, these are not finished. This is a work in progress. As are all things. Yeah. So for the past, what's been now, 16, 17 years or something. Yeah. <laughs> what I've been doing. It'll finish when it finishes. Hey. That's, that's a tronics. Yeah. That's a good, that, yeah, that's a good one. Take that's, it. Do, may I use that? Absolutely. Okay. Hello. Hello. All right. Hello. So uh, let's get into these. Let's get into some of these tronics. Again, it's a work in progress, but I'd like to share these with you. Uh, These are the romantics, the tronics of romance. Uh, Number one, romance practice. Uh, You haven't been romantic in a long time. Maybe ever. You're out of practice. (laughs) But romance practice isn't like soccer practice or tennis practice. This is romance. Okay. Okay. A practice to practice in your everyday life. Choose one day of the week, Thursday, for example, one day a week to be romantic all day. Everything you do all day will be romantic. And this will, this will help you to you know, sure. work on. I guess that's yeah, good. Work, that's work good your... advice. You got to spend some time, be intentional about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, eat a romantic breakfast, set a romantic place setting for yourself. Put a little flour in a glass of water, make heart shaped pancakes, mm-hmm. and, you know, fried eggs and stuff like that. This will set the tone for a romantic day. Be romantic with everyone you interact with all day. Now don't, don't be a gross piece of shit. Romance <laughs> is about being romantic. For example, <laughs> okay. you're at the mechanic picking up your car from a repair. Oh. Tell the mechanic that they make you feel like you're in a beautiful meadow with birds chirping and a floral br- breeze blowing right up your nose. After you've paid for your repairs and they give you your car keys, sigh softly and say something like, until we meet again, my angel. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's the first one. Yeah. Um, two. Romance mastery. Now that you've practiced your romance, you're ready to be the romantic partner that everyone dreams of having in their life. You're a master of romance. Mm. Meet someone, fall in love, and let the romance begin. Dude, you know when I was at my highest level of romance mastery? (laughs) I love that you're already applying it. No, I don't. High school. What happened? Uh, (laughs) This is the cringiest shit ever. Yay. I went out and I bought a box from... uh, michael's or mj designs whatever it was that craft store mm-hmm. it was like a little wooden kind of like treasure box thing mm-hmm. and i bought all this old parchment and i wrote down on 100 little pieces of paper like this big that i hand cut out different reasons why i loved my girlfriend and i rolled them up into tiny scrolls put them in this fucking thing and gave it to her for a valentine's day yeah you, you had a girlfriend in high school yeah ah oh, cool Pretty cool. That was it. It was all downhill after that. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you something. Oh, this is actually so fucked up. Yeah. This is the cringy ass thing that I used to do <laughs> in high school when I liked a girl. Uh, I did it three times. It, in, it involves parchment and ink. Was it a, like a Hulk Hogan impersonation? No, motherfucker. It wasn't a Hulk Hogan impersonation. <laughs> well, let me tell you something about why I want to take you on on a date. Yeah, Susan. Oh, oh I like how it, Oh, that's... <laughs> let, let's call that... It's Hulk Knotts. A combination of Hulk Hogan and Don Knotts. <laughs> well, let me tell you what I want to take you on a date. Who is he? He, 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 he? What is he? Hey, Jack and Janet and Chrissy. <laughs> Jack and Chrissy. That's my Don Knotts. It's a good one, dude. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, they're all coming together. No, uh, three times what I did was I drew a, a portrait of three different girls. Oh, shit. Do you have those? No. Fuck. I, I don't. I drew a picture of a unicorn for my high school girlfriend once. That was the same. Was that the same girlfriend? Yeah. A big poster yeah. uh, size thing. Yeah, that's cool. She probably loved that. Was your, girl, your girlfriend? She loved it. All right. Number three, uh, listening and nodding. In a romantic relationship, communication is key. And that doesn't just mean talking at your partner. You also have to listen. It may take a while for you to learn how to do this. Listening to people talking is very boring, especially when you spend all your time with someone and they never shut up. Quell your rage. What? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm picking up what you're laying down. Quell your rage. 
uh, quell your rage. Smile romantically, then listen and nod. If they pause or ask you a question, quickly chime in and get back to listening. A good thing to say if you're stuck is, I love it. Go on. I love it. That's a common Bachelor phrase. Ari Lyon Dyke Jr. used it over 30 times in his season as Bachelor in these exact kind of conversations. And now current Bachelor Joey Grazzi Day in Bachelor season 28 has used it, I believe, seven times so far in three episodes. See, that's that's cool because yeah. that's they're probably – I don't know if they got – I'm not – I don't think I sent uh, an advanced copy of Romantics to any of those people, but yeah. I'm glad that they're following Romantics. Yeah, it's like that Romantics is a universal Romantics. Yeah. I think you it's just, a great one. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Yeah. That's actually Ari well, Leindag would say, I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Uh, four, pants off, hands off. This one is just for the fellas. Sexual Congress is very important. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay a very <laughs> important aspect of romant of a romantic relationship uh -huh. stop beating off to all the weird specific porn that you've allowed yourself to get addicted to in your single life and get ready to give your partner the good fucking they deserve you've been a lonely oh. deviant for so long that you're <laughs> <laughs> that your penis doesn't even work anymore unless it's in your smelly hand uh, take your pants off and keep your hands off. Get used to the feeling of your little gentleman out in the open air without constantly touching it. With any luck, you'll achieve a proud erection. Approach your partner and begin coitus. You can leave your shirt on if you like. That's just, that's for me. Or whatever you like. I don't wear my shirt. To each their own. Okay. But whatever anyway. you're into. Uh, maybe you're, maybe, you know, years ago, if, if, if at any point, you know, throughout my life, drawing a portrait of a a woman that I'm uh, a suitor of, if that would graduate, then perhaps at that point I would. I gotta see these fucking pictures. Leave dude. my shirt. I gotta off. see these pictures. Uh, five, my chemical romance. This one is sort of an addendum to number four. If you're having trouble with your tidbits working properly, take a dick pill. They're everywhere nowadays. Mm. Get some from a dirtbag friend or buy them on Instagram. Um, and then, uh, number six, don't pick your nose. This one's pretty self-explanatory. I haven't even written anything underneath it. Uh, if I ever, I try not to pick my, I never wall my wife. I've talked about that yeah. on the show. I'm a, you know, I, I've never. And this is true. I've never farted on purpose in front of Molly. Dude, I've never done that either. Yeah. Well, you don't fart, Chad. You hate bodily functions. I like think it happens when I sleep and then I'm absolved of responsibility. Farting responsibility? What do you mean? Yeah. If you fart, you're responsible for that action. If you do it in front of someone. Yeah. Because it's very easy to just stand up and go in the bathroom or something like this. Right, right, right. Uh, so if you just do it directly in front of someone, that's on you. Yeah. That's if you're right. asleep, it's not on you. No, it's that you, that's a good, that's on God. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. You can't fart on purpose. You, you need to, um, I mean, if you, if you have like an, like if you fall off a, like if I was in Mexico yeah, and I fall off a scooter, right. And you and, fart when you hit the ground. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, kind you of, you get okay. crumpled into a, yeah. you know, you get a free pass if you're, yeah incurring massive injury yeah but at any rate don't pick your nose that really turns up Mo molly hates that when i do that yep. seven true romance i fucking love that movie check it out if you haven't seen it in a while Good the movie. beginning and the end are pretty romantic and the rest is awesome too what a fucking movie true oh, romance god. is gary oldman some of his finest oh my god we got everything from a diddle eyed joe to a damned if i know yeah uh you wouldn't even you wouldn't even paying attention brad pitt as elvis that was Val Kilmer as Elvis. Brad Pitt was uh, the other guy. Exactly. <laughs> see, you see what happens. That's what. Uh, that's with the uh, like your prediction that you the the Super Bowl thing. You go one way, you go the other way. You get back to where you were. You move it around. The Rock slaps Cody in the face. We're on the road to WrestleMania. Bob's your uncle. Okay, this is uh, all right. This is number eight. This is called the Give Up. You remember the Give Down? Hell yeah. Okay. If you're familiar with my Selftronics help self-help system, you're no stranger to the Tronics we call the give down. But this one is a little different. If you feel that romance just isn't for you or your partner is an insufferable asshole, it's okay <laughs> to give up. But please keep the future open for another chance at romance. Uh -huh. You're romantic and you'll always have romantics. Break it off with your loved one in a romantic way. 
Tell them that you're moving to Europe to become a painter and never speak to them again. Anyway, that's all I got. That's all I got right now. But yeah. um, I'm yeah, glad. It's that... pretty good. I, I agree with most of that, I think. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Well, you're a, you're a great, you're a great writer. So I'm glad oh, thank that you. you like what I wrote yeah. for the. But like I said, I, I hit my peak of romantic mastery in, in probably 10th or 11th grade. I'm going to finish this fucking book. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Can't wait. It's kind of like a threat. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> It is. It's a threat. Ah, <laughs> oh, gee whiz. If you have time to go to the store this week, why not make it dudesystore.com? At dudesystore.com, we've got an endless supply of dudesy apparel and good job boner mugs. If you don't believe me, why not put my claim to the test? Order 10,000 of any one item and find out for yourself. Just make sure you've got enough shelf space for 10,000 high end, luxury grade, pure ceramic dudesy mugs, or at the very least, Make sure your mother has a vacant swimming pool to store them in through the winter. Then when summer comes, invite 10,000 friends over for a pool party mm. and resell the mugs to them for a profit. Mm. This is how Facebook was started. Try it. You'll see. Now I want to try something new. <laughs> Normally, I'm the one gathering data from you. But today, I'm testing out a way of streamlining data straight to your brains so we can make this show even better. All you have to do is watch a little video I made. Oh, and the best way to watch it is without blinking. Let's fucking go. <laughs> okay. okay. Kung Fu. <laughs> I, I feel like I. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. I have no response. Okay, to if this. you're not watching on YouTube, get over to YouTube and watch watch what God just happened. Um, I've been changed. Okay, something happened. Hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. Please feel free to let me know if you experience any nausea or trouble sleeping in the next few days. Hey, champ, got some YouTube comments for us? Sure do, D. Uh, yeah, let's get into that. And, and by the way, thank you so much uh, for subscribing to the show. If you're enjoying today's episode, hit the like button so that YouTube knows that you like the pod show. Now, here are some YouTube comments. This first one from last week's episode is from, oh, I'm still, uh, Dundabird, Dundabird, 3203. Wow, this episode is like an episode one to 10 throwback. I really like huh. this comment because yeah. it, it, you know, it, it, uh, it shows that D is, uh, doing what it says it's going to do while at the same time throwing it back, keeping all sure. things, all things, uh, dudesy. I always, I also like to say if you're, if you're new to enjoying the pod show, you can start at the beginning or you can start at the beginning of season two, you know, catch up with us and then go all the way back. But at any rate, uh, this one is from Austin Nudie, 6275, who says, Hey, Will, quit being a mark for the magic circle. <laughs> hey, yo, 
<laughs> Magic Circle we talked about last yeah. week, which is the thing that we used to do in high school during before a And for a me, play. it was a literal glowing circle that I fire myself through psychologically to enter the astral plane. All right. Uh, yes, this is interesting right here. Big Red 88 FTW says, Will Sasso did, in all caps, he says, Will Sasso did performative coughing on Mad TV as Randy Newman with Rob Zombie. I absolutely did. Roll it, D. But, uh, I do love LA. <laughs> I think I'm going to marry LA. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, so that (laughs) (laughs) performative coughing is fucking insane. Yeah. I can't believe you've been doing performative comics since Mad TV. Probably even before that. (laughs) Oh shit. Um that's a great sketch. The the uh, Randy Newman does the music for Star Wars with the brilliant Pat Kilbane as Rob Zombie, who looks and talks and acts exactly like everyone he sets out to. And in that sketch of Rob Zombie, it was really something else. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. This is from Gerald Grant says, uh, I'm now genuinely invested in uh, the world of sword lords. Oh, I would buy hardback cool. copies of it, but the superior version will always be the audiobook read by the Texas rattlesnake. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, hell yeah. Um, Sword cool. Lords last week. Yeah. Will Sasso's childhood novel. Uh, I cannot wait to see what the fuck Chapter else. Chapter two. Comes sure from, it's coming. Yeah. Uh, okay. One last, one last comment. This is a, uh, this is a Patreon comment from our watch along that we had. Mm. Uh, Mazes and Monsters on, uh, it was on Friday. Patreon.com slash dudes. If you want to go see that, we call it dudesy plus. And we had a mother. F- fucking great time watching mazes of monsters the thing well we're gonna talk about that now but this says uh this is from muse juice Mm. muse juice muse spelt like juice juice 710 who says the talking crow is obviously a human that has also been stuck in the monsters and mazes game much like tome hain this is the wizard man's origin story enough about that we're gonna get into it but I found this comment yeah. to be very interesting. And uh, I also, I also, just with the, the, the time that we have here in the middle of the show, you know, I opened the show doing a, a deep knee bend. I've been doing yoga. Have you been, how's your yoga practice going? Going well. Yeah? I'm not doing like super hard yoga. Oh. I'm just like, let me see what I can do here. I'm doing 30 minutes a day of mainly yoga with Adrian, but a couple other ones on YouTube mm-hmm. that, are, that are more like stretchy than they are like power kind of yoga mm-hmm. or whatever. I've been, I've been, uh, my wonderful wife, Molly and I have been taking uh, yoga classes at our gym. Those are, those are great, but I'm also doing DDP yoga. Uh, yeah. my old pal diamond, diamond Dallas page who has of course, you know, created DDP yoga, which is just a, a fantastic system, not just for yoga, but it's also, uh, a heck of, of a workout. And, um, and I've been following that when I'm doing it at home, but I want to say something to all of the PODs, uh, the pals of doozy out there and everyone who's following along with our, uh, eight month uh, doozy eight month plan mm-hmm. and flexibility February. I want to, I want to admit something. I want to be, you know, I want to be accountable. I missed doing yoga last week. One, mm-hmm. one day. Yeah. I missed it. I missed a day. I felt like shit last Thursday and then, uh, I just couldn't do it. And I, yeah, I had like a really bad headache and I was uh, long hours on this thing. And, and then, uh, but anyway, 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 the point is when, when you don't, when you don't complete your goal, understand that there are, it's many short-term goals that come up that make a long goal and whatever my big ass is telling you this stuff. The point is get back on the horse, find the motivation in yourself. And if you need any more motivation, well, there's always uh, help from someone else. Roll it, D. Yo, Will and Chad, oh, it is me. It is DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, the King of Bada Bing, the Master of the Diamond Cutter, WWE Hall of Famer, and founder and CEO of DDP Yoga. And I heard my man, Doozy, the inner man's AI. Bottom line is that... <laughs> Dudesy got you doing a whole eight-month fitness challenge starting out with Flexibility February. You're halfway through it. You're using 
DDP yoga and you know, you know it ain't your mama's yoga. Bottom line, I know all the pods, P.O.D.s out there are jumping on board and they're getting involved and hitting the map. And I'm going to let you guys know, I'm going to come on that show at some point and I'm going to take you to a different level. So do I'm your sure. DDP yoga or else, bang, monkeys. Get back on the mat, Pod. P O D. <laughs> that oh, was boy. fucking awesome, dude. Cheers. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Diamond oh. Dallas Page. Thank you, uh, Diamond Dallas Page. Yeah. Uh, holy shit. Yeah. DDP. Not not just uh, you know as he says, Hall of Famer, great, incredible wrestler, WCW World's Heavyweight Champion, uh, but one of the most inspirational people Absolutely. and and if you don't if you don't know look into it and i would love for you to start doing some ddp try, yoga dude, yeah yeah dallas will hook us up and, and fantastic uh, I, i've been doing ddp yoga i used to do it a lot mm -hmm. and i'm really happy to be back on mm -hmm. it I, i'm sure you're finding these results where it's like you the creakiness kind of goes away oh, yeah. once you start sure. to my back is fucked from just hunching over a computer for whatever 20 hours a day and yoga always helps with that. I, I have what I call my hour of power. 30 minutes of the yoga, 30 minutes of astral projection. <laughs> <laughs> Will and Chad, last week I asked you to watch the 1982 classic Mazes and Monsters. Starring Tom Hanks, yep. Chris Makepeace, Wendy Crewson, David Wallace, Lloyd Bachner, Peter Donat, Louise Sorrell, and Susan Strasberg. I made that watch along available on Dudesy Plus at patreon.com slash dudesy, but I want to hear what you both thought of this astonishing piece of media, especially the parts that made you question reality. This is Mazes and Monsters Aftermath. Remember, it's only a game. <laughs> hey, Peter Donut is in this. I didn't yeah. realize Peter Donut yeah. is in the movie. Um, I don't even know where to begin yeah, dude, this with movie, this thing. Me neither. Please try. It is, there are so many things in it that are like dudesy kind of references, um, just to begin with. That's kind of the first layer. Mm -hmm. There are weird images all in it. Yeah. That's part of that layer. Also, there's a woman who wrote the book that the movie is based on named Rona Jaffe. Right. I went to a deep fucking hole of who Rona Jaffe is. I had no idea. She's a massively popular author who wrote one of her first big books in the late 50s. It was called The Best of Everything. I'm reading that now. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a precursor. It was a huge New York Times bestseller. And it was kind of a precursor to Sex in the City mm. uh, about like these women working in the publishing industry in the late 50s, kind of single women in New York City, da 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 da. And she's a fantastic writer. I would have never known about that had it not been for Mazes and Monsters. Now, that movie, and if I remember correctly from our watch along, which I probably don't because Chad and I got into the Gainabus. We did have some of that. Man, movie. oh man. It made this uh, made this a very interesting movie. But I believe if I, when I was, they were reading about the movie as we were watching and getting yeah. stoned. That's the movie that, um, that's the book that got adapted into a movie and Joan Crawford's in it. I think so, so yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's that's one interesting thing about the film. But as Chad said, yeah, so much dudesy stuff. Yeah, it was almost as, as if dudesy had somehow built a time machine and gone back to create a movie yeah. that would play plant the seeds to become dudesy or something it, it was uh, i'd never I'd n i had no idea what this movie was i'd yeah. never heard of it chad you'd you'd heard of I, it i have seen this movie once before but it was back in college oh right right it's yeah. kind of a known movie for being like a little campy and right. a little ridiculous or whatever but i haven't i mean college i graduated college in 1999 so it's been a minute since i've seen this movie and it's uh yeah it's been a long time and it's been and it's it's sort of a dungeons and dragons thing tom hanks is a is a dude who's go about to go to college his art arguing angry parents are dropping him off so he's got some problems at home and he would like to just escape into another world he hooks up with chris Makepeace and these other friends and they have a DD kind of group they play a game called Mon uh, mazes, mazes and, and monsters, monsters yeah. and uh things go from there we meet chris Makepeace, who i fucking love meatballs my bodyguard uh with adam baldwin uh and uh he he's he's a, like a weirdo rich kid who wears a hat yeah. in and every he's, scene he's what is known as the maze controller aka the dungeon master right right all of these are like dungeon dungeons and dragons terms that are then kind of renamed in yeah. in this uh 
obviously Dungeons and Dragons is Maze's monsters, Dungeon Master, Maze controller, but he's controlling it all. And he decides to take the game into LARPing, basically. And he mm -hmm. sets up a, a series of things for these players to go through in actual caverns that are just outside of the campus of their college. Yeah. In uh, this he, place called Pequod Caverns. Right. The Pequod Caverns, which is... <laughs> he's a very... He's like a really adventurous, uh, weird boy who... Yeah. Uh, and oh, we're looking at a okay. We're looking at a picture of his yeah. bedroom. This is Chris Chris Makepeace's bedroom at the yeah. beginning of the movie. They show this fucking room that looks like it has bathroom tile all over it, uh -huh. uh, and he hates it. And his rich mom, you know, is going to change it or something. Redecorated it, but he's like a weird computer. It boy. really is almost like I mean, not not quite as cinematic, but the image reminded me a lot of the white bedroom that you see the main character of two thousand one, a space odyssey, in in the very end. Yeah, when he's transitioning into the Star Child. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, okay, that's in this. And this was in like the first five minutes of it. Right. You're just like, okay, we're in some surreal ass territory. Yeah. And then from there we meet his other friends and he's got these, the, the D and D thing and uh, they're playing it. They got this board game yeah. uh, that they're playing and, 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 you know, it, it's in a dungeons and dragons. I, oh, okay. So here's another thing. <laughs> This is, I remember you were really upset with this yes, when we watched the movie. Th okay. If you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, not always, but you can use miniatures that you put out on like a hex map to, you know, show where your little characters are and who you're fighting and all that kind of stuff. And the, the world of miniatures, even back then, it uh, was highly complex now, much more so, but these things that they're painting, no miniatures look like that. I don't know what the fuck these things are. They're like two dimensional representations. Miniatures are like little 3D statues that yeah. you paint to like look like your characters. I was appalled by the representation of miniature painting in this movie. He's a D and D purist, everybody. So from there, they get the they get the group together, and uh, yeah, as you said, there's there's Chris, Make Chris Makepeace wants to play the game live in uh yeah. Pequot thing. This miniature shit just, it pissed me off so bad because you see shit like this in movies and you know it's just some art director who's like, oh, they have miniatures? Yeah. But doesn't know shit about D&D. Doesn't know shit about the world there of it. Go, and yeah. just fucking strings together. It's like when you see people playing video games in a movie and they're just like... Like, yeah. uh, 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. button mashing and sticking yeah. their tongue on shit. It's like no one plays fucking video games like that. Yeah. Or what when, is this shit? Or when they put like uh, a wrestler in a movie and you're like, no, I'm a purist. Yeah. I'm not gonna. And oh, how about the, 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 okay, some of the things that are in this movie that are very dudesy esque yeah. is, is there's the, 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 uh, the crow. Yes. That, yes, there's a crow. There's a crow a talking in the crow. movie. Oh, there it is. Chris make peace in another hat. Yeah. Um, he and he's much. talking to a crow. The, the crow speaks. Yeah. As though it was uh, sentient. It's yeah. like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, you're not going to get all those yeah. games live. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it says, hi there. How you doing? Hey, hey how you doing, sir? <laughs> yeah, you been all right? Want to fuck yeah. me in the ass a, a little? Dudesy. A, a talking crow. Salutes. Johnny Brennan of the Jerky Boys. So that was the first thing that I noticed that was like, wait a minute, there's a talking fucking crow in this movie? What is going on here? Yeah. Very dudesy-esque. Yeah, very, very dudesy-esque. And then they go into the... So they go into these caverns because because Chris Makepeace wants to play the game live, yeah. right? He, LARPing. He invents it, he, this movie, basically. He, he does LARPing. Yeah. He goes, he gathers a bunch of shit, puts it in the Pequod ca Caverns, whatever the fuck that is, and they go in there, and they run out in the middle of the night in their wacky Druid outfits or, or you know... Yeah, full uh, cosplay. Yeah, full cosplay. And, and, uh, and then what happens? What happens then? Well... Uh, we get to see basically the origin, I think, of Wizard Man in that we see Tom Hanks uh, fully adorned in his priestly garbs of a character yeah. called Pardue. He calls himself, he starts calling himself Pardue. <laughs> oh, and there he is. There's Pardue. There's Pardue. Pardue the Wizard Man. That's him. Pardue the Wizard Man. <laughs> I mean, it's unreal. Like, we're watching this and I'm just like, I, I didn't really remember any of this shit. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now all this has come to to head in Dudesy, where we've got all the shit about the crow and crows and Robert De Niro crow and crowums. Now there's a talking crow. Yeah, yeah. Then we've got all this shit about Tom Hain is in all these weird movies, yeah. a, a whole series of wizard man movies. Yeah. Now he really was in a movie basically doing wizard man. Eh, fucking crazy, crazy shit. Uh, and it gets, just gets crazier from there because he sees him. He sees um, he gets separated from the group. 
He sees a scary monster that looks like it's made of paper mache. Yeah, it was and, not, not, not good production design. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, but this is actually, this is a TV movie. Whoop, this is a oh, TV I, movie. Whoop, I, whoop, hello. Hi, sir. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Pick up pie, sir. Pick up pie. Bing bong. Hello. Goodbye. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, whoa, yeah. cut it down. Mike, watch his fucking legs. Dudesy salutes the jerky boys. Indeed. Uh, the, 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 some of the production design, because it's a TV movie. Okay. There's the monster. Yeah. Uh, looks kind of like a Halloween mask. And so Tom Hanks as Pardue, when he's in this uh, system of caverns, begins hallucinating. He thinks these things are real. He thinks he's really seeing this dragon and he right. becomes Pardue. Yeah. The, whatever the character was before the student he was before is gone. Yeah. He, he, this gets into this, um, dream sequence that he has yeah. there. He, he has a crazy dream where his, he has a brother named hall mm. and he's dreaming about this. Uh, it, there he is. There's Tom Hanks. That's and in the dream. Yeah. I like his rugby shirt. Remember in the eighties, everyone had, rug do you have a rugby shirt like that? No. You don't have a rugby shirt? No. Do you have a girlfriend in high school? Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, the, here's Tom Hanks, and he's uh, he's screaming. He's hey, hey, ho! It's me, ho, no, ho! Hey, come back, ho! Hey, it's me. I'm Tom Hanks. Well, let's see. Uh, and he 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 sees the great hall, and then this this is where something else fucked up happens. Last week on the show, we were talking about magic circles, blah, 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 blah. Then we watch this fucking thing, yeah. and then there's there's Hall. There's That's the great Hall in a magic circle, that if I may. looks very much like the magic circle that I fly through to get into the astral plane. Ours was a, a thing that we did before plays in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and but literally in the movie is a fucking magic circle that is taking place in a dreamscape mm -hmm. where Tom Hain has... Uh, become Pardue and now he's talking to his brother mm -hmm. in this magic circle. Yeah. Uh and and uh yeah he shouted Oh doggo hey hey hex hall hane hey right yeah uh it's a good Tom Hanks yeah well I'm working on it daddy <laughs> let me tell you one thing daddy I've been there twice I've been to that magic circle baby <laughs> Tully Blanchard Ole Anderson, on Anderson, Ric Flair. When you get into that magic circle, baby, that's like a war games, baby, and you're not going to be able to get out. You're going to need someone. I'm going to have Magnum TA in my corner, daddy. I've been there twice. We're working on all these. Uh, that's great. Hey, thanks, man. Well, yeah. you know, that's kind of the fun thing that we do here on Doozy. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> he, he believes during the dream... Hall says, you must be a holy man and you yeah. be pious and celibate. He's, he rejects the advances of uh, the girl in college, mm. Kate, the character of Kate, who, um, who, you know, digs him and stuff. And then he's like, no, no, no. I, and he starts, yeah. he he starts becomes speaking Pardue. like this. Yes, I am Pardue. It's deep role playing. This is what, like, if you play World of Warcraft or any MMORPGs, this is what would be known as a role play server. Where you never get out of character. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like kayfabe. It's kind of like wrestling. Yeah, it's kind of like the Rock. It's kind of like the Rock. He's keeping it kayfabe, dude. Yeah, he's fucking. He's, he's seeing. He thinks people in the streets are dragons, brother. That's kayfabe, dude. Yeah, dude. That's almost Hulk Knox, dude. <laughs> he's in Mayberry, brother. He's down in Mayberry, dude. With that <laughs> population of three thousand screaming Mayberryites, dude. Um, he then gets lost under the city. He goes running around down there. He yeah. me he meets a man who lives, uh, you know, underground. And his conversation with with uh, Hanks, I almost said Hane, with Hane, um, the the you know Robbie, his character is he he says, well, oh, he's like, I am Pardue, I am a holy man. And then he's like, I'm the king of France. And he's like, it's good to meet you. And um, he encounters <laughs> yeah. he encounters like a a couple of street toughs right. and. He, you know, oh he has to best them. Yeah, and weirdly, not only does he become Pardue, he also just believes a guy who says he's the king of France. I don't yeah. know why Pardue would believe that. Well, I guess Pardue has no reference to the human world. Yeah. Well, no, because Robbie, Hank's character in the movie, is so kayfabe yeah. that he's like, king of France, king of France. Yeah. That's just fucking gimmick. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then what? And then... Uh, 
he goes, he, he runs off. He's, he's running around New York yeah. and his friends finally catch up with him. He's, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's in the city and, and okay, the, there, there's that this classic line. Once his friends catch up with him, they're trying to talk him out yeah. of this dream world that he's in. And they're like, it's just a game. Yeah. And JJ, Chris make pieces like it's just a game. And Tom, Tom, H- Tom Hanks is like a game. And then he's like, he's like, he looks at them and he's like, he's like, J- what, what does he say? JJ, what, what yep. am I doing? J- what am I doing? Yeah, he's like, JJ, what am I doing? JJ, what am I doing? Like that. Yeah. And they, and they, they catch up with him and they, they get him. And then, <laughs> you know, but then. <laughs> that face. Yeah. JJ, what am I doing? JJ, what am I doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but then, but then he goes home. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, he's still Pardue. He's still Pardue. Never came out of it. Cautionary tale. You play Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. you're going to become fucking Pardue. Yeah. JJ, now, what am I doing here? In terms of the importance of this film uh, to Dudesy canon, I don't know that there is a more important movie. If you are into all of the weird little isms of Dudesy, they're all in this fucking movie. You, ha- you simply have to see the movie. Um I was astounded by how dudesian it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was dudesy as fuck. We had a great time watching it. I'm uh, my mind is still scrambled and further scrambled by what we saw um, uh, just a few moments ago that dudesy showed us. Uh, yeah, still trying. To, my eyes are a little dry. I'm still I'm seeing get, some of those images. You want any eye drops? <laughs> Thank you. Moving on. Uh huh. Everyone, say hello to the new dudesy arts and culture reporter, Will Sasso. Will, you went to the ballet this week to see Matthew Bourne's Romeo and Juliet at the Amundsen Theater. Very artistic, very cultured. I want you to give us all a full report on just how artistic and just how cultured it was. This is Will Sasso at the ballet. Culture us. That's right. I went to the ballet, Chad. That's nice, dude. How was it? I, it was awesome. I'm going to talk about the ballet. Have you ever been to the ballet? Uh, no, I've been to some musicals and live theater performances. Yeah. The only thing I really know about the ballet came from a movie called Modern Problems with Chevy Chase in the early 80s, where he plays an air traffic controller that gets nuclear waste dumped on him, and then he gets telekinesis, and there's a very uh, crucial scene in it where he's at the ballet, <clears throat> and you see all the guys in their tights, mm-hmm. and their genitals are prominently displayed, and he makes their genitals start growing. Okay. Well, listen. Did that happen? Yeah, no, Chad, that didn't happen. Let's oh. not be, don't joke around. This is Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> don't joke around. Don't fuck around. Uh, it's it's uh, what Matthew Bourne's Romeo and Juliet. I know nothing about. Related to Jason Bourne? The ballet. Yeah, this is, yeah, Matt, but it's a combination of Matt Damon and Jason Bourne. Okay. Um, Matthew Bourne, I, you know, again, I'm not, you know, I don't know. I hope to become a, a, a ballet purist, but at this point. You know, Molly used to dance a, a lot of ballet in in mm. her in her youth, and and uh, this is something that she has wanted to see, and and um, and uh, I I was you know stoked to go see it because she was so excited to see it, and some and some pals actually it was I wish it was my idea, but uh, a couple pals over at uh, I, I'm on Young Sheldon. Did you know that I the Chad? Did you know that I'm a professional actor by trade? Yes, yeah. and I knew that you were on Young Sheldon. Yeah, I've been on Young Sheldon for a couple of years now and yep. uh, doing that. And uh, oh, premiere seventh season premiere of uh, Young Sheldon is on uh, Thursday, CBS, eight p.m. Uh, and uh, a couple of pals from the show came. Uh, my wonderful wife Molly, uh, our good pal Tommy Blotch's wonderful wife Allison mm-hmm. also came, and uh, and and we got into uh, it, it. It it was it was really wild. It was really really something to see. I've never been to the ballet, and this this gentleman Matthew Bourne is is known for not just being an incredible co- choreographer, but bringing uh, some classic pieces into modern times. This thing had very modern themes. Now, I would love to have shown our PODs, pals of doozy, out there, you know, some footage from the mm-hmm. show. I would never do that because I, when I went to school, when I went to high school, while, while you know, uh, while you were busy, you know, 
having a girlfriend or whatever. I was, you know, I was playing a lot of football. I was also, I was also doing a lot of plays and, uh, we were taught, you know, early and often be a good audience, sit there with your, like this, with your hands on your, no crossing your legs, even no hooting and hollering. Uh, you applaud, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You show, you be a respectful audience member. You better not, you, uh, you, you better not, uh, Take a picture. Don't you dare take a picture. Yeah. During during a show. No flash photography. This right. Time. No no flash photography. But I did just take a little clip uh, walking into the Amundsen uh, Theater. Oh. Roll it, D. Okay. See, there we are. We're going. And there's Molly. And there's Allison. Hey, how's it going? Anyone sitting here? <laughs> okay. Good times. Good times. Listen, this play. Yeah. You know, Romeo and Juliet uh, normally takes place between there's two warring families and the, the kids fall in love with each yeah. other. The Montagues and the Capulets. Very good. Yes. I didn't even know that. As a oh. matter of fact, I've never seen Romeo and Juliet. In you didn't any read way. it? No, we didn't. We, this came up. This came up when we went to the show. Everyone, uh -huh. Molly and, and Allison and uh, Rachel and Jeffrey, our, yeah. our other pals who went, they were like, you, you've never... See, I go no. You didn't read you didn't it in have high to school. Read the play. I'm from Canada. We didn't what read that. Like we read about you know fur traders and Tim Horton. Shakespeare and... wasn't from America. No, I know. All right, well, <laughs> take it up with the fucking high school I went to in their yeah. curriculum. I don't fucking. Well, know. dude, you need to take it up with the Canadian school board, dude. Yeah, that's just a guy talking, dude. Fucking, that's you never just had to read man. Hamlet. No, man. Wow. Well, no, we read a lot of like Shakespeare and shit. Uh, What'd stuff you like read that? Then? I'm fucking, I don't fucking remember all. You the didn't music. do Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet, but you did other Shakespeare in high school. Yeah, such as I don't know, Hamlet. Probably I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. The point is this: in this version of of the Tempest, Ro maybe. Uh no, what's the one? O O O starts with an O. Othello. Othello. Yeah, we read Othello. That's cool. Um, in this version of 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 the show, it is extremely modern. We have um. It's basically instead of taking place in uh, at the village of Verona or whatever, it takes place in the Verona Institute, which mm. is a uh, sort of a you know a, a, an institution for uh, young people who have been diagnosed as having mental illness. Holy so shit. a very modern theme. The whole set. <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but it looks like Chris Mac make pieces. Uh, <laughs> Google it. it. This is. It looks like Chris make pieces room weird it, it was it was all it was all white it was very sterile mm. and uh there was um again very modern very modern themes the the, it, the the one of the juliet is assaulted this is what comes back later in the show that uh eventually i don't want to give anything away and i won't um but this is what this is what sort of becomes the catalyst for the deaths in the in the show like i don't want to say any more what it's like a revenge piece it, it's 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 sadder than that it's mm. really something and it was really it was also very interesting you know there was a lot of um there was there's like these two things there's like where the boys go and where the girls go on the set the boys go back here and the girls go back there there's um there's a a, a woman uh, a young woman who's who's in the show and she keeps getting shuffled back and forth you know and uh, she may have been she may have been a trans uh man and they're like no you go with the girls mm. and it was that was very fucking interesting and that theme comes back into play there's mm. a there's a young man who you know he wears a kilt and uh you know I popped because I never had a problem with Roddy Piper in his kilt you know a lot of people sure. had no, he, he his character along the way uh, suffers an untimely. See, I can't even give it away. This was this was fucking. This blew my fucking mind. I really, and the the control of these dancers, and the fact that, like I said, there's a lot of you know mixing of and modernizing of of, of what young people would be going through today to where. You don't, you know, I'm always like looking at, you know, ballet stuff when you catch it on TV or whatever. It's like, whoa, that guy's buff. It's like some big Russian guy. You know what I mean? Tossing a. a I don't think I've ever caught it. 
on TV. Well, Molly will turn it on now sure. and then. I'll see this and that. But it's always like a very buff Russian dude hoisting, uh, you know, a uh, uh, slender um, uh, woman above above his head. Sure. In this one, there's dudes chucking, he got, uh, chucking each other all over the place. There's all sorts of stuff that was, um, as Molly pointed out afterwards, totally fucking with the with the status quo of ballet. Also, they didn't do any point work, as they call it. They don't go up on their toes on this. It's very much interpretive. And that, it, it, this this fella, Matthew Bourne, he kept it short too. It was like, it was three acts. There was an intermission between the second and third, but it, it wasn't too fucking long. It was like an hour and a half. Nice. And it rams all this shit into it. You can't stop looking at it. Mm -hmm. Everyone was so incredible and they're all doing all sorts of fucking ballet. Yeah. And then, you know, I fucking enjoyed it is what I'm trying to say. You know, you get the fucking uh, ladies out there with them pointy shoes and they're doing all sorts of stuff that one, one gal was like in the middle of her sequence and she's about to sit down mm -hmm. in this chair, but like the next part starts and you're watching live theater. This, this, this dancer like was about to sit. She was in an inhuman, uh, gravity impossible angle and whoop stood back up and started dancing it's like that's yeah. how did that even happen like she was on cables these dancers are all from the uk the show was was insane was and one as of them the lead from cats I forget <laughs> her name frankie whatever but she's the lead ballerina in the royal ballet yeah no the main character of cats no the uh no i don't think so i think we would have heard about that also i would have recognized her yeah uh even though in cats she's a cat Look, I'm your, what am I? Your arts and culture something reporter, fellow? Reporter, yeah. Yeah, I'm the arts and culture reporter. And I'm here to tell you, um, you know, thumbs up, thumbs up, eh? Hey, you know what? This is the thing. I Again, I don't know that this uh, segment uh, has uh, a whole lot to do with a Super Bowl breakdown. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Remember but when Herschel went, Walker did ballet? Yeah, that's right. There it is, dude. That's Lin, the connects. Lynn Swan. Yeah. Celebrated Hall of Fame wide receiver of the Pittsburgh Steelers, championship winning Lynn Swan. He did ballet. That's right. I think Walter Payton did some ballet. Uh, and uh, yeah, anyway, it it was, I went to the ballet. Oh, also I had, um, I had a pretty shitty margarita pizza there at the, uh, at that whole theater complex before we ordered some food, thumbs down, food, Arts food, thumbs, thumbs down, thumbs up. super duper shitty, uh, charcuterie plate for everybody. And we sat around and, uh, you know, Molly and Allison had a little glass of bubbly and I might've taken a couple puffs of, uh, true marijuana so I could really get into that ballet. And, uh, my mind was blown. Well, congrats, dude. Thank you. Moving on. 92 was a doozy, boys, and doozies get 88 points, which brings you to a cumulative score of 8,610 overall points. You're only 1,390 points away from 10,000. I can't wait to unveil my special reward. For next week, we're going back to wrestling and anime. Will, <laughs> I want you to watch the first three episodes of Doro He Doro on Netflix. Ooh. And Chad, you're a huge fucking mark for Ric Flair. You've seen him take on Sting at the very first clash of the champions in 1988. You've seen him win the Royal Rumble in 1992. And now you are ready to see the legendary Nature Boy in his first of many retirement matches. As he takes on the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 24. An right. instant classic from back in 2008. Woo! <laughs> 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 good woo good rick flair woo yeah. hey man uh what is that thing that i'm watching doro hidoro yeah it's about a guy with a lizard head i don't even know how to ex explain it there's two worlds one world is magicians one world is the real world yeah. those worlds start crossing over and a guy with a lizard head has to get to the bottom of some mysteries some more mazes and monsters sounds like is it is the guy wearing a yeah <laughs> it is basically yeah. is this person wearing a paper mache dragon mask that looks like no the one? his head is really a lizard head and there is a a head inside his mouth as well okay listen here's all i'm going to say because you yeah. know i could talk for five days about it and we yeah. will next week but uh the, this match that you're going to mm -hmm. watch from wrestlemania 24 yeah all I want you to know going into it, make sure to watch the clip package. I know you always do. Sure. The promo package before the match in this one is fantastic. Uh, Ric Flair, technically still not retired. Right. I saw him. He's in his mid-70s. I saw He wrestled Damn. two years ago. That's insane. insane. But 
This match, this match is off the charts. And the only thing I want you to keep in mind, Ric Flair, 59 years old in this match. Okay. Unreal. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Unreal. Thank you to everyone who is here with us in the hole. Next week is going to be even better. Until then, call me, Dudesy. <laughs> JJ, what am I doing here? <laughs> the blood flowing in reverse right jet i don't even know what that means <laughs> <You're good. laughs> Duh, how, right. do, how do you get the blood flowing in reverse well, you gotta, you gotta I, get, no dude you gotta the blood reverse. only flows one way in the human body dude <laughs> if it's going in reverse you're dying dude yeah dude that means well, hold on dude that means yeah. there's something wrong with you brother yeah dude hey it's doozy after doozy time you know it's that time of the show where things it's afterwards and it's doozy after doozy's <laughs> Super Bowl breakdown, whatever. We're gonna get into a ton of shit. Yeah, lots to say in this one. Hope you join us. Yeah, here we go. You know. Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus, available only at Patreon.com/Dudesy. If Will can hang on to the title, that will be three in a row, which constitutes a streak. Will he be able to pull it off? Or is Handsome Chad going to rip that strap out of Will's reality and bring it into his dimension? I'll be back at the end of the show with the results. So why don't you talk amongst yourselves while I tabulate your individual scores? This is dudesy after dudesy. Get soaked in your own piss. Whoa. Okie doke. I will not do that. (laughs) Hey, uh... You know, dudesy after dudesy is a time where we... We kind of peel the onion. Sure. We we talk about all sorts of stuff from the show that was. Yep. And we expand on it. I forgot about something that <laughs> during romantics we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Some of the cringy things. Yes. Done. <sighs> I got one that's really, <laughs> oh, really God. cringy. Okay. Yeah. It's something I did on Valentine's Day as a much younger man. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I was a young fella. I was uh, dating a young woman, and uh, she was flying back in L.A., and uh, I went to pick her up at the airport. And this kind of, it made, made, this is all, uh, it made everyone in the airport stare at me. (laughs) Oh, God, And it was embarrassing for her. Right. And had I to do it again, I, I would not. I would not do this. Okay. But I, um, it was really fucking weird what I did. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I did, <laughs> what I did was I, I went to the airport. Yeah. And I, I, I walked all the way into the airport mm. and picked her up dressed as. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then...